back to Jane's route. We are here about to enter chapter 28. I really don't like this place. Forrester Inc. escorted, I guess we're captured. <laughs> escorted everyone to headquarters, all under arrest. Veritas is held in a different room. Caleb, who has survived the fight with James, is also separated from the rest. Lena is the one I urged Neil to talk with. I would explain the situation thus far. I've been campaigning for the release. James is also in the room with us. As you can see, the threat has been neutralized. I want to take him back to our planet where he will face trial in our new justice system, says Lena. Is she speaking English or like, are we translating? Mm. Also, can you remove these bindings already? It's not good for my skin, she whines, gesturing at the ties wrapped around her wrist. C commit crimes on our planet and you will face our justice. Neil cracks her. Why should we let you go back after mm -hmm. an attack? Because our previous leader is the one who made the ca that call. And now he's harmless. She waves at her hand at him. Oh. Let us return to our home planet. We will never return again. Uh. This is the third time we have been invaded by your species. You will have to, be t you will have to account for your deeds. Mm. Not by choice, James grumbles. Again, they were oppressed and forced to attack by their direct dictator. I cut in. They were hoping to overthrow him during this last attack and they succeeded. No one among the GO actually wanted to attack Earth. <sighs> Intentions don't matter when they, there's been real consequences. People have died from their attacks. Several supers were critically injured today, not to mention the damage to our infrastructure. Neil pushes his glasses up to the bridge of his nose, his eyes sharp as always. <laughs> Surely you don't expect me to let you walk away without any repercussions. Why can't you, I ask? What if we kept Veritas and you, and you let the others go? Yeah. No, Veritas comes with us. The people you will deserve their justice. Lena immediately rejects the oh. idea. We'll comply with your demands, but that is not one of them, she stresses. <sighs> Lena, you are willing to kill him regardless. Do you really need to take him with you? Asks James. <laughs> Dead or alive, that lightly intented fish is coming with us. This is going in circles, Neil sighs. While I understand your plight and struggles, you do not get to come here and circumvent our laws because you promised nicely to not come back uh. again. Is it a deal you want, Lena suggests, also getting irritated at the conversation. Oh. I can give you some of our technology or a peace offering. Neil crosses his arm, remaining oh. silent. Such as? He seems uh -huh. interested. We have access to several military-grade ships you can keep, she says, referring to the small drone ships the soldiers uh -huh. used. Then she taps her ears. And we'll give you several copies of our Babblefish, a device that automatically translates foreign languages to your own. I keep my mouth shut about the fact that Riot already reverse-engineered it and made a working prototype on his mm. own. Does that make you talk in foreign languages as well, like you're doing right now? Yes. <laughs> Not quite. That's a learned ability. The use of speaking said language with the help of the babblefish requires a lot of training. James steps oh. forward. I would be willing to teach, he offers. I'm very familiar with the babblefish's workings. It's made from Uhu technology. Now dismisses the idea with a head yeah. shake. Regardless, a small ship and a little gadget is not comparable to the damages we'll suffer. Uh, and it growls uh. at him. Our people have suffered long enough at the hands of him, she exclaims. Mr. Forrester, please surely we can come to an agreement here, right? What else do you hope to achieve? Put them in pr into prison, I say. May I remind you that it was James and I that helped take out the biggest threat Cleaner has faced yet. You owe us a lot. Mm. An operation you did illegally without any mask, may I add, he says. Ugh. Then I would take on all of their crimes. Punish me, let the others return, James mm. rumbles. You're getting punished for their crime doesn't change the issue here. We've got a ship capable of inter inter interstellar flight hanging above cleaner. Using this future attack by them is very possible. Mm. It takes in a deep uh. breath. There is no guarantee that you will not return to attack us again. As of now, you're Earth's declared enemy number one. Even Lena doesn't have anything to say to that. <sighs> Your earthlings are so uptight, she complains. It's impossible to negotiate. All we want to do is leave and never return. Oh. Well, just your word for it. I cannot allow you to leave just like that. What if that's all you need? Her word, I speak up. He raises an huh? eyebrow. Explain. She could take an oath. Huh. And who would she take an oath to pay tell? He says sarcastically. Me. She can make one with me, I answer. Mm. No offense, Miss Melody, but your track record with oaths isn't particularly stellar. I will not even trust you to take care of a goldfish, let alone the fate of a, the human world. I bet down on my own lips. Do it, do it with you, bruh! I don't know. <laughs> Feeling hurt by his words, he's right though. I did break the oath with James and Eok. He can't trust me to do not to not do the same thing with Lena. Mm. However, I am willing to become the keeper. Good. Finally, you say something smart. <laughs> Neil answer surprising me. You're willing to die. Yeah. If I can't protect Earth against extraterrestrials attacks, then I do not deserve to be the head of DAET. D -A -E -T. I've got a little bit of respect for Neil Forrester just now. Oh. Alright, you had to keep me in the loop. It doesn't sound like you're talking about a verbal oath here, Lena interjects. Mm. 
That is right. Their oath is done by a person who will bind your word to your life. If you break your oath, the both of you will perish. Jim answers her in his own uh. language. I have to take the same oath as well to promise not to harm anyone or hmm. die, you say, Lena Nooses. So if I tell you I'll never return to Earth, but I do, I die. Hmm. You say you are now the de facto leader of your planet, correct? Asked uh. Neil. As of today, I'm the queen of planet Yule. They'll all follow my rule, Lena uh. clarifies. That is not to say there is an ev- eventual coup that overthrows you. Much like what ha- uh. happened with today. With what happened today. No, no one can be sure of that. But I will do whatever I can to reveal the planet. And I will not be plundering other planets for their resources, not committing, nor committing genocide. <laughs> Mark my words, pretty boy. He raises his eyes at this. Queen Lena is here to stay. So, do you think taking an oath would work, I ask. Now that now I'm thinking whether or not oaths have a distance limit to it or something. I can't imagine Oath Keeper ever had to consider actual galaxies between two subjects. Yeah. It's risky, like I said. The current governing body could be overthrown as well and return to attack Earth. It's much better than nothing, right? I sigh. You can't account for everything. Now that we know that there are many other life forms in our galaxy, another planet could attack us Ugh. instead. You don't have a tr- much of a choice, James adds. You either take the oath where they will leave Earth alone or you don't, and you'll never be sure of another attack. Mm. I think you should just focus on your own defense, to be honest, Lena asks, says casually. Earth seems to be pr- wide open to attack, whether that's from you or another oh. planet. That, Neil's eyes suddenly widen. Uh, sud- eyes suddenly widen. That is something we can negotiate with, your ship. Mm. I'm not giving you my giving up my ship. We need to need it to return home. Linus tuts at him. Mm. The technology that camouflaged your ship and got through our satellite spotters. If you give me the blueprints for that technology, along with taking an oath, I will let you leave. Lena frowns at him, thinking over the mm. offer. That would be hard. It is not originally our technology. We do not know how it works. It just just that that it does. Yeah. Then deliver me the piece of technology that camouflages your ship. That way you disarm yourself and Earth will possess the same technology for defense. It is not a bad trade, to be honest. Very well. We have no need for it anyway. If you let my men back on the ship, we will hand it over to you, Lena agrees. Then you agree you will take an oath to never return and attack Earth or harm any of its inhabitants. Lena bows slightly. If that's what must be done, so be it. He'll tap the button on the glass wall. Summon my cousin. He'll speak loudly into the intercom. As we wait for the Oath Keeper to arrive, Neil has agreed to let us visit Barry's cell. Chained to a chair in the middle of the room, his light hair falls into his eyes. Even though he's supposed to be com- uh, completely harmless, I feel a chill run down over my back. <laughs> Eyes up, Lena commands him as she approaches the middle of the room. Her tie wraps, are, her tie wraps have been removed for now. Veritas doesn't respond, however, her head still bent down towards the floor. It seems attacking the earthlings proved to be your demise. So much for underestimating an enemy, she says with a chuckle. I guess she came here with the express intent to gloat. Not that I blame her. He was the one who could completely eradicate their home planet after uh. all. You thought you'd continue to use me to keep my brothers in check. When that proved to fail, you decide it's better if no one lives. What a foolish uh. thought. She bites down on her tail. Nail, not tail. <laughs> you managed to get Caleb on your side, but luckily James came to his senses. Mm. After all this time, forced to serve you, I no longer feel con- content for you, James speaks up. You are just a weak being, undeserving of my hatred, he dismisses mm. him. <laughs> now that we're all here, how about you tell us how weak you really are, Lena? Asked with a broad smile on her face, like she knows the secret. <laughs> I figured it out, you know, she chuckles, that it wasn't you that killed everyone in our palace, it was the little prince. Finally, Veritas' head shoots up and he glares at Lena. That comes as a shocking revelation to me, too. Do not speak of matters of which you possess no knowledge of, he hisses slowly. Oh, but I do, she says in a sing-song voice. The little prince has a tremendous amount of power. So much he he can annihilate entire planets. No one has destroyed planets. Even though he he was but a mere baby, he was still a hundred times more powerful than you are. What are you implying, Lena? As uh, James asks, unable to grasp new information. Uh. The little prince murdered her parents, James. The, that blindy white light was him, not Veritas. That's a tough pill to swallow, but I do remember how Norinus basically brought down an entire building when he tried protecting me. So Veritas has been using him as a weapon. Is that why he's been so desperate to find water for Norinus? Billyas has been running experiments on him to improve his condition, and he figured out the extent of his actual mm. powers. Well, that a tongue of yours. You're going to forget regret the day you met me if you speak of Nornis any further. Veritas growls at her. He has nothing to do with any of this. Still protective of him, aren't you? And Lena teases him. Do what you tr- must to me, but Nornis goes free. Nah, I don't think I will. My eyes won as well. Lena, you can't be serious. I say in a worried tone. Nornis doesn't even know what Veritas has been doing. 
Nornis is a weapon, plain and simple, she states. A weapon that must be disarmed. Noticing how worried I am about Nornis, James steps uh. in. Lena, the prince must have also been used, just like the rest of us. There is no need to dispose of him, or even charge him of any crimes. Uh. Have you not been listening to me, she exclaims. He killed our family, our parents. I protected you from his attack and lost the ability to phase. <laughs> Veritas chuckles slowly. <laughs> Is that how you want to remember it, he quips. <sighs> you shut your mouth hole, she growls. Nothing you say is of any important importance at this mm. point. I have nothing more to say regardless. Do what you must. Varys remains silent. James' eyes soften. Uh. Knowing what truly went down doesn't change the fact that it was all due to Varys' doing. But Snorinus was too young to probably even remember. Much like how Captain Caleb doesn't even remember anything from that time. Mm. There's no need to punish the prince. Lena, I will tell you now, but I'm not going to be on your side if you do anything to hurt Nornis, I want her. <laughs> she huffs arrogantly. Mm. I know you're Jane's mate now, but that doesn't mean you can make any demands of me. Her demands are my demands, Jane says in an almost threatening tone. I feel appreciated that he's got my back like this. You're both impossible, she cries. You want revenge? It's right there, your fingertips. James takes in a deep breath. Revenge doesn't change the past. We have also committed atrocities to protect our family. He gives Ver Veritas a stern gaze. In a way, I guess we're, we've been similar. A pretty well connection to make, but if Veritas has been doing this to protect Nornis, then I guess I can see why James would say that. Lena, I have to ask you not to harm Nornis when you take the oath, I tell her. You can't punish him for crimes he did when he was a baby. Shit. You're too fond of the little prince, she clicks her, t clicks her tongue at me. I smile at her. Yes, he was very nice to me in the brief period I stayed at the oh. palace. Lena, please. Veritas deserves justice, but I agree with Machiko that we should not- Oh my god, he said my name! Should not take revenge on someone who was too young to even remember. Mm. She bites down her thumb and then uh. sighs. Fine, the little prince will remain unharmed. And taken care of, I mean we add. Because she decides to throw him out of the palace. <laughs> Want me to tuck him in at night as well, like a good mother, she mocks me. He has to be unharmed and taken care of, repeat. Do not remove him from the palace. But he will continue to prove his condition. Uh. You sure know how to pick your mate, Lena grumbles towards James. A decision I do not regret, he immediately replies. Do not test my patience. Lena throws her hands up in the Ugh. air. Alright, I just want to get off this planet return. I smile at James and nod at him. Thanks, I say, for having my back. He's so cute. He returns to smile with a nod of his own. It seems my habits have finally rubbed off on him. James turns to Lena. Mm. Let the people of you make their decision on what to do with Veritas to be a merciful leader. Mm. What made you this wise all of a sudden, she asks, raising a dark eyebrow at him. Perhaps you never realized I was always like this, James responds. I sighed in relief. It seems Nornis' safety. Safety? Nor it seems Nornis' safety at least is guaranteed. Then a guard walks in to retrieve us. Oathkeeper is here. It's time to make an oath. After Neil and Lena took an oath together, one of the conditions was to ensure Nordis' safety. We've been escorted back to the park. Neil would like to have the camouflage technology before they leave. Hmm. I will send someone up there to retrieve the device, says Neil. You stay here before you're allowed to uh. board again. One of the goat will escort you, says Lena. She beckons to one of the goat among the crowd of soldiers who steps forward. Steps forward. S steps forwards? I, I read that like three times and my brain did not compute. One of the Neil's guards follows the goat, marching towards one of the drones parked nearby. They both enter and fly up towards the uh. ship. Now we wait, says Neil, and he turns around to wait at his van. James, are you sure you're staying behind? We can rule Yule together. Do whatever you want, Lena pleads. Uh. You're free to call yourself queen, but I do not have any interest in leading the guild. James says, shaking his head. Then he looks at me. Uh. My mate has family here. This is her home. I already separated her from them once. I'm not making that mistake again. Makes me happy to hear you say that, I admit. But are you sure you don't want to stay with your own family? Uh. That's an odd question. You are my family now. <gasps> James gives me a weird look. I can't believe what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to see you're alive, Caleb, I guess. Caleb speaks up, having been quiet all this yeah. time. Lord Veritas defeated, Captain Jane's mating with an earthling, even Goat not looking like Goat anymore. He's currently wearing the same bracelet provided by Forrester Ink to keep his phasing in check. It seems that when he isn't phased, Caleb acts like a much more reasonable person, capable of actual mm. conversation. I'm worried about leaving Caleb with you, James mentions. He was truly devoted to Lord Veritas. Uh. He is Lord no longer. Don't call him that. Lena immediately chastises him. Uh. That doesn't change the fact that he put you in da into danger, James stresses. Huh. Me, Caleb scoffs. Do you have any idea what I had to do to make sure Lord Veritas didn't harm uh. Lena? 
To be fair, Caleb, your efforts were quite fruitless. Meredith was going to kill me either way, and I had taken that into account, says oh. Lena. From now on, little brother, you're going to have you're going to be serving the people of Yule. No longer do you have to listen to that tyrant. Caleb was quiet, looking down at the ground. You think he'll be okay? I whispered to James, worried that Caleb being a loyalist will pose an issue in the future. Uh. Despite his dedication towards Veritas, he does care for his family. I trust he will make the right decision with Yule as captain in command. Uh. It will be strange to return to Yule, but not have you as our captain anymore, Yule speaks up. He has already removed the glamour and changed back into his traditional garb to prepare for his mm. departure. I'm sure you'll do just fine without me, without having me around, James replies. Well, I'm definitely going to miss you, Yule, I admit. Uh, hug him? I don't wait for him to respond, simply hug him, starting the poor guy. But then he smiles softly and returns my embrace. And quickly lets go once he sees James, <laughs> James eyes shooting daggers at him. I promise to take care of Prince Norris, he says. Take him out of the palace too, okay? He shouldn't be cooped up. <sighs> Any more demands? Selena asks with a roll to her eyes. Yes, tell him that I enjoyed our time together, answer seriously. <sighs> Eo grins, will do. But I'm really going to miss you though, stay pouting. You're welcome to stay here as well. <sighs> as much as I would have enjoyed that, Yule is my home, and it's time to take back what was once ours. He's got such a deep connection to his home planet, no way would he ever stay <sighs> here. However, I'll never forget my time here, or even our meeting. You were kind to me even though you had every right to be angry. You didn't look down on me for acting. Weak and unintelligent. He gives an awkward <sighs> smile. I'm glad I got to meet you. You falls down onto one knee and grins up. <sighs> princess or not, you always be my princess. <laughs> oh, James, you got competition. <laughs> oh, that is so cute. My cheeks flush red with a compliment. I giggle at him. Goodbye, Eok. I wish you the best, and we meet, maybe we meet again. Yoga rises from the ground and gives a pointed look at James. In complete silence, he makes a polite, a very polite and grim bow in front of him as uh. well. Goodbye, Captain James. Your teachings will always stay with us. James closes his eyes and also bows in front of mm. Yoke. Never thought a soldier like you was secretly running in cahoots with my sister. But you were resourceful and clever at times. May you continue to serve your people. Eog grins widely at the compliment, probably the first of its kind he's ever received from James. Then all of a sudden, the ship above us disappears. Numele runs uh. up to us. What is going on? He says in an urgent uh. voice. Nothing to worry about. My guy's probably showing how the device works. And just like that, the ship returns into view, like it never left uh. at all. See? They'll be coming back down soon. <sighs> Neil House boat remains quiet. True to her word, the ship opens up as one of the drones flies out with the soldier and guard from before. As the guard steps out, he carries along a large and rectangular metal box near the size of a door. Mr. Forrester, I retrieve the device, hmm. he says. Very well, he turns to Lena. You are now free to leave and never return. <sighs> so dramatic. James bows in front of oh. Lena. Goodbye, Lena. May your rule be bring peace to oh. you all. Enjoy your time on Earth, James. Don't forget who your family really is. She says with a slight smile. She then turns to Caleb and removes the bracelet. He gives her an odd look, rubbing his wrist. She pauses and removes the tracker and arm as well. Mm -hmm. Guess I won't need this old thing anymore, she smirks. Caleb then silently bows in front of James before he grabs Lena by her waist and flies up into the sky. He waves at me, at, at me as he and the other goat into a small drone ship to leave as well. They force Veritas along with them. Small drones all fly up to the shipment to get ready and hmm. disembark. They would never hear from them again, says Neil, looking up at the sky. In a lightning fast movement, the ship disappears from orbiting, leaving hmm. the planet. You two better behave, Neil warns uh. us. Now that Mr. Bultish has outed himself and you've shown your support, super identities are out in the open. I will not be able to protect your privacy from now on. I understand and I accept the consequences of my actions. He tilts his head to the uh. side. Do you really? <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> Neil shakes his head and finally leaves us alone, getting into his van with his guards and driving away. James and I stare at the se sun setting in the sky. He's staying behind to be with me. It's crazy how this all turned out. I'm still going to have to tell Ryan Kane, I murmur. Oh. Tell him what, he asked, looking down at me. That we're together, and you're staying with us. It still feels unreal when I say it out loud. I lean against James' side, looking up at him. I still remember seeing him fall from the sky and having to catch him. Never thought this is what would have become of us, I say, reminiscing about our first meeting. This is not what I had planned either, James agrees. Then his eyes soften, his lips curl into a smile. I met someone that challenged me in such ways I had no choice but to change my plans. He closes his eyes briefly before peering at me again with his brown orbs. Well, you may never be able to best me in a match. Your smile brings me to my knees. You're cute. You're cute or whatever. <laughs> so cute! Aww. But I kind of low-key liked what Yuke said. <laughs> I giggle shyly, feeling my heart warm up. 
I still can't believe how I'm how enamored I've become with James. Hey, you say that now, but I kick ass today. Surely someday it'll be yours. His soft smile transformed into a cocky <laughs> smirk. Is that a challenge? I'll tell you when we get home, I say with a grin. I close my eyes and rest my head against his chest. Yeah, we're going home together. A home on a planet with supers who may not have to hide who they are anymore. The narrative has started to change. From the first invasion to the battle to, to, to the battle today, our lives have been changed for, forever changed. And it's a life I've decided to show with James. Innocent ending? Yeah, I'm gonna skip. Innocent ending? <laughs> well, what? I thought. I thought. And here I thought. This is Gretel? James' innocent ending? Crazy! I don't feel like that. Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. I thought I chose all the feisty ones. Did I not? Oh, no, I didn't! I. Okay. <laughs> I guess I did. I chose more of the feisty ones near closer to the ending of the game. Because that's 59 kindness right there. No wonder things are slow, but this says chapter 25 is uh, when you can try the new route. So uh, technically, either way, it's really long. Wait, we can continue? He has another chapter to go? Can we play Grey yet? Available in 2022. So Grey and um, Aiden or Aiden, they are ETA to be like coming in 2022, but we are already in... Well, as of I'm recording this, we're in October 17th. The time this gets uploaded, we might be in November-ish. <laughs> so, like, I don't know when those guys are coming out. Because 2022 is about to be over. But, it says I could continue to James Route Chapter 29. Um, so, I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode for the actual finale. So, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Okay, it's not, it's not, it's not. So I, I could just fuse everything together. Huh, lied. <laughs> it's just weird because I see chapter 29. I wonder if it's the DLC. I'm assuming it might have been the DLC. The uh, rated R DLC that Steam doesn't have. But I'm pretty sure it's a Patreon exclusive currently. If I'm correct, I have no idea. But anyway, this is fused together. So now I can actually talk about the pros and cons and my ranking. My ranking has stayed the same. Literally, it is Dimitri, Neil, Kane, and James. James is at the very bottom because we didn't get to the actual love part until the very, very, very like cusp and like the last two chapters and and. Um, I don't remember how it was in the previous routes, but at least in the previous routes, it was more like the story scenarios between MC and the character we're falling in love with. So I didn't mind as much that it was a slow burn. This one, it felt more story filled of like the situation and not focusing on the MC and the love interest, which is why Sally James is bottom tier for me. I know he's higher tier for some of you guys, but you know, we all like different people and rank them at different links and whatever. Uh, I can't talk. <laughs> My brain has kind of just fizzled out. But yes, for me, James, Sally is going to be at the very bottom. Currently, we, with the four guys we have officially out, it may change. He might be up a little more after we eventually get to play Grey and um, I don't know... Can you guys please tell me if it's pronounced as Aiden or Aiden? I want to say Aiden, but that could be also pronounced as Aiden. And I, I, I don't, I have no idea how he would prefer his name. The pro with James though, is the fact that he can say your name in the game. Compared to the other guys' routes, I mean, I, I haven't played Dimitri and Niels in a while. I don't know if they got fixed and um, allowed you to have that option. But him saying our name is probably the biggest pro out of his uh, out of his story. Just hearing your name being called out in a visual novel game, I feel like makes the game even more immersive and make you more delusional. <laughs> but it's uh, it's very it's very adorable the aspect because you know. It's 2022. 
just things like that should be implemented into games where you can hear your love interest call you by your name because I'm sure there is technology out there because you know there's a technology for me to have Winnie the Pooh say some random stuff in a Winnie the Pooh voice <laughs> So I'm sure that can be still implemented in games as well, but I'm sure it's a lot of coding and everything done, so... That seems like an nightmare in itself. Um, but yes, my rank, Dimitri, Neil, Kane, and James. It may change once we eventually get to play Grey and um, Aiden. Um, Eok is for 2023, so... I have a feeling Eok is definitely gonna champ over James. Possibly, maybe even Kane, but I don't know. Let's not let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> but I'm really glad that we now know, because at the time I was like, "Who the hell is Eok? I don't even know how to pronounce his name." But his is also in a different time realm, so maybe it is. It will be a super slow burn, and I might not enjoy it as much. But who knows? Gray and Aiden seems to be in a normal realm world. I forget who I said is probably gonna steal our heart. Is it was it Gray? Cause he's an enemy's lover. I think I think he is. He not knowing who you are takes a liking to you. Uh, yeah. I feel like he he's the enemy's lovers. He might he might steal everything if the story plays out correctly. If the story plays out correctly. Cause I thought for 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 honestly, for real, I thought James was gonna be top. Because he, he just fits the appearance of the types I would go for. But he did it, sadly. Surprise. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys actually for watching now. Um, this is the ending of t me recording Taylor Tales. Until Grey eventually comes out. Because I believe Grey comes out before Aiden. I could be wrong. Definitely tell me how you guys feel about James Route. What is your ranking of your your the men here? If you play the game, I would definitely like to know. And yeah, thank you guys for watching, stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the future.